that my knee. <laughs> I have to move my knee. Okay. Okay. It's Alzheimer's. What they forget to tell. Oh. This happens every week. It's Alzheimer's. What they forget to tell you. Episode mm -hmm. forty. That's how old I am. Hi, Rick. Hello. I don't know if you're anybody here. Hi, Rick. Hi, Richard. Hi, Richard. Okay, so this week... I'm gonna get the cushion. Thank you. Sorry. We have uh, Cindy on. Hi. Um, she's gonna talk about um, her, her father passed away last week. July 28th. Was it last week? No. So, no, it was the week before. Okay. Yeah. So it's still fresh. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Carlos. Um, and you're going to talk to us about how it is when someone passes away in a nursing home. Because mm -hmm. it's a little bit, well, I wouldn't experience that. So right. I think people need to know. Okay. So I don't know what you want me Hi, to Alan. Say. Hi, Alan. <laughs> okay, so I know. Are you sure you're okay? I'm good. Okay. I think I'm good. Okay. Uh, yeah. If not, I'll leave the screen. No, I won't. No. <laughs> it's not okay, an option. I won't do that. Okay. Okay. So, um, yes, yeah, so my father passed away um, on July 28th. Uh, he's been, he was living in a nursing home for 13 years. Um, yeah, prior to that. Um, he was 83 years old. And, uh, his official diagnosis was dementia with secondary depression. Um, there was some confusion about the diagnosis a while back, but then when we put him on the Alzheimer's medication, it was horrible. Okay. It was catatonic. So, then so they, what was that, Aricept? Um, Aricept. Okay. Yeah. He started to kind of stiffen and seize and stuff, so we took him off it. Um, anyways, uh, so um, on July 25th, so that would have been... A Wednesday Wednesday um, my father stopped eating um, which he had done before and he kind of bounced back after a day or so uh, but he didn't uh, he, he refused his medications he wasn't eating um, for two days uh, one of the things that is is, that mine? is okay. important also is in the nursing home uh, there there's different levels of care that we have to sign, um, kind of like the DNR. Uh, so there's four levels. So a DNR is a do not resuscitate form. Yes. For people who don't know. I thought it was. Okay. So um, initially he was, so there's four levels. So the fourth level, not to get too technical, but they'll pretty much do anything they can to save um, the person's life. So they'll take him to the hospital, they'll call the ambulance, all that kind of stuff. And then... Level one is palliative, so they won't do any type of intervention. So at the time, my dad was a level two, which meant that they would treat him only in the home, but they wouldn't transfer him to the hospital. They would do the best that they could. Um, but they gave me the option at the time to change it to a level three, which meant they would uh, send him to the hospital just for some assessments and stuff. So we did that, and that was Wednesday, was that Wednesday night? No, Thursday night. We sent, uh, went to the yeah, hospital. It was Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and after a lot of assessments and blood work, uh, it basically came out that his kidneys had gone into severe failure uh, due to dehydration, and that there was no other treatment that was going to help him. He was very frail at that time, so um, it was our choice, well, my choice at the time, to either try and treat him, which would have kind of proven fatal anyways, or to send him back to the nursing home so that he would be palliative, and that's what we chose to do. Um, so within like 48 hours, he went from level two to level three, and then when he returned back, he was a level one, which meant they didn't, they stopped giving him medication, um, they just made him comfortable, um, and they had the um, morphine and stuff on in his tray in the event that he became restless, which they didn't use, which I was really happy about. Um, so he went back to the home on Friday morning, 
all of the family came to visit him during the day on Friday. And then he, he and, yeah, because you said that he, he was eating. He stopped eating and then he yes, did eat. Yes, because okay. I think I, I actually mentioned it on the podcast, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That he had eaten dinner, okay. which we were really excited about. Just ignore me. That's okay. Oh, nice voice. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, he did eat dinner, um, but he was still not responsive and he wasn't as alert as they wanted him to be. So, so one other thing about um, having them in the nursing home. So he was seen by the doctor on the Wednesday, no, on the Thursday, and uh, he had ordered blood work. But blood work is only done on certain days of the week oh. at the nursing home. Okay. So we would have had to wait until Monday, which was the next day that the, the labs would come and do the blood work. Really? Yes. From Thursday? From Thursday. Wow. So the reason why we sent him was because then we would be able to get the blood work done right away. Um, so that was one of the reasons why we did that. Um, anyways, so he, um, family came to visit him on Friday, and then me and my brother and my sister-in-law were there on Saturday, and he peacefully passed, so it wasn't, he didn't go into any distress. Um, he was sleeping the whole time, and, you know, he, he passed uh, while we were at lunch. Well, I'm really, I don't know, it's like mixed feelings. Yeah. It's still hard. It's still your dad, so. Yeah. But, you know, I think that what I keep telling my, my, my friends and my family is that I think he was ready. Yeah. Because he passed quite quickly, right? Like well, they were. I know. When yeah. you told me, I couldn't believe it. Um, and, you know, even the specialist said without treating him, he could have been... He could have lasted anywhere between three to five days, sometimes a week. Apparently, there's some stories where, like, well, even, I've they heard can, two weeks. Yeah, two yeah. weeks with no food, yeah. and you know, um, and he passed away within a day and a half. So, I think he was, I think he was done fighting. Yeah. You know, and um, at least he was able to pass away at home. He was able to see his family. Um, he wasn't in any distress. That's something I always worry about um, because I don't want it, you know, I don't want it for him to be in pain. Um, I'm now wondering about the lights. Should we turn? Look, look. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's some shadow or some glare. I don't know what's happening. Look, no. <laughs> we need to close that now. Like, no, that I- is. Okay. Look. No, just keep going. What? Okay. It's fine. Anyway. Nobody's looking at me. No, but still, I am. It's like it's all shadowy. No, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna adjust. Okay, fine. So, uh, <laughs> so he passed away on the 28th. Um, one of the things I had mentioned to Karen prior to this was that if you have a loved one in a nursing home, they don't necessarily tell you the policy of about um, what happens when your loved one dies. Um, probably because they don't want to have that conversation with you at the time. Which probably they should. They should. At some point. Yeah. Um, So the policy, the ministry policy, at least in Ontario, is your loved one's belongings have to be removed from the room within 48 hours of their passing. Which we did not find out until we were in the midst of all of the uh, funeral arrangements. Um, And they were being very adamant, you said. Yes. So they called... They called my brother, said, you know, somebody's coming to look at the room. And, and I know it's about optics. Like, I know that they don't want people, like, families to come in and look at a lived-in room because then they know they're going to associate with somebody who passed away, right? So it has to be, like, a sterile but who, a lot of, room. But think about it. Let's just think about it in the real world. Yes. If someone passes away, even, like, going into that person's room, let's just say it was in a house, and it, even if they didn't pass away in the house or whatever... It right. takes a long time. That yes. process is a long yeah. time. You're not ready to just... No. Yeah. No. That's so I had some fine words. Yeah. Some sweet words. What, what, what kind of words? Can't stop thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so I, di- I, I did not go to pick up his stuff. Um, I don't blame you. I mean, that's 13 years of his life, and they want me to pack up everything in like a couple of hours which at least for me was unacceptable um 
words. I'm using professional words right now. It was unacceptable. It's inappropriate. Inappropriate. To um, say the least. Mm-hmm. But it is ministry standards. So, you know, that's something that I think everybody should know if your loved one is in the nursing home. My mom passed away in the nursing home. But I think because they were rooming together, it wasn't necessarily that imminent or that, um, sorry, that important to get her stuff out yeah. in that period yeah. of time. They probably had time. And there's, a, like, um, unfortunately, which brings us to another topic, is that there is, like, a huge waiting list Yes. to get in. Yes. There's, like, 30, 000, over 30,000 yeah. pe- people waiting. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And this is a subsidized room as well. In, in Ontario. Yeah. So... Right, like this isn't a private they room. They don't have time, unfortunately. And yeah. oh yeah, okay, no, yeah, I understand. Was, like so, this is like a subsidized room. This is for so people. he was sharing. He was sharing a room. Wow. With yeah. his roommate. Okay, and, so um, yeah. It, my fish tried to jump out of the aquarium. <laughs> Only during this I thing, know. right? I'm, does that always happen? I don't know. I've never heard it in Ontario. All right. But my fish is trying. They're trying to escape. I'm boring. Hi, Bill. Um, hi, Bill. Um, hi, Nadira. Hi, Jason. Ta- I know I shouldn't, but in case there's an emergency. My son's at a soccer game right now, and I might get a text for an emergency, like, where's the game? So, give me one. Is it this? Yes. Sorry. This is so unprofessional. Rude. I, I know, but I just want... No, we're good. Okay. Um, so, there's a 48-hour window for you to get your loved one's stuff outside of the room. Which so is, even if you are able to or not, it has to go. It has to go. Um, so, get her, yeah. Um, so that's that. Um, and it's been up and down. I've had a lot of wonderful people in my life checking in on me, so I'm very appreciative. <laughs> like if you had to mention any. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Well, I think you just... No, okay. Sorry. Right. Never mind. I don't That's true. <laughs> Not important. Um, but I think, I mean, I remember when he was, when we, when it first started happening, we were talking and mm-hmm. I felt, and I said, I you was know, so I kind happy. Of, yeah. I was like, yeah, he's eating. He's eating. But then even when we were talking about the possibility, because I remember when I called you, I said, he's not eating and you already knew at that time. like uh, It's not a good sign. Yeah, it's not good. And I remember saying to you, like, I was... I oh, and for people who don't know, mm-hmm. because swallowing is like the last sign for like Alzheimer's or dementia, they have difficulty. They forget how to swallow, and so that's usually. And when they forgot, when they stop mm-hmm. eating, you kind of like prepare yourself. So when Cindy's dad started eating, I was like, "Oh, yeah, okay. we were so yeah, happy." Okay, so. But even like when we were even thinking about the idea that this might not be good. I do you remember, like I, I remember saying I don't know how to feel about it, like it was sad, like I was sad, but but he's been, this is something that we've watched him like go through for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, it's like a double edged sword. It's the same thing I say about my mom too. Like it's eighteen years, and you know you're prepared. I'm trying to prepare myself, but I know I'm gonna still feel that like, okay, it's good. Because, you know, she's not, yeah. she's just a shell. It, yeah. There's no quality of life. But, I mean, you're still going to, it's still, it's hard, it's hard to say, I think. Well, because it sounds, it sounds insensitive yeah, or cold, but, but I it, don't think and it she, is. And you're still grieving. Yeah. Regardless of the situation. I think that's important to discuss because um, I think a lot of people, I don't think they mean to be insensitive. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, I even hear it. And I'm sure you've heard it. Um, well, there's no quality of, like, but the person's still living, right. or the person, you know, there, there's still a life, if, regardless of the quality, right. um, it's still not nice to hear when someone no. tries to kind of, like, and I know, I think they think they mean well. The intentions, for the most part, are good, for the most part, are good, um, others which are not necessary for this podcast are not very why? Oh, this no. is we talk, we're venting. People want to know. Mm. No, not so much. Not really. Not to. Well, I mean, yes, he's not suffering anymore. Yes, he's with my mother, uh, who also who but passed away. But we don't away, really but... know. Okay. 
we don't really know if he was suffering. Was he suffering? I don't know. That's he was, right. I mean, I don't he know. was nonverbal right. at the time. Just like mom. Mm-hmm. Um, I even asked them. I remember I asked the doctor at the time whether or not he was in any pain, and they said, well, all we can go on right now is his nonverbal like, cues, like his grimacing. Usually, yeah, the grimacing. Right, yeah. if he's making any noises. But yeah. he was very peaceful, so we have to, at least for our own, you know, comfort, we have to kind of believe that he was not in pain. Mm-hmm. But we don't, like, and I think that was a big thing, right? Because like, I think that there's always this idea of you want to do as much as you can to to kind of keep them alive and then that then becomes conflicted with the quality of life right because then you're the same thing like you were talking about going back and forth of the levels like okay yeah we have a do not resuscitate but then you said that the nursing home at least called you to make sure like are you are you still do you still want him right to to have this do not resuscitate and it, it, it is it's like you know the first thing that you think about is saving somebody saving a life right. and yeah. it's really tough to kind of be like no and one actually one thing that I found really interesting was the different perspectives in terms of the medical like the practitioners right so um, I had met with the ER doctor first and the, e, the emergency room doctor and the ER doctor said you know he, it's not it's not looking good all of the options um, are going to proved pretty fatal because he's very frail um and so at that time we had decided because I wanted his family to come and say Mm -hmm. goodbye so we had decided that they were going to put him on IV okay right to prolong it and then transfer him to the nursing home in the morning because it was like four o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning and transfer him um to the home where they would then stop treating him and then he would eventually pass and I left the hospital, and I was so upset, and I was crying, I was calling my brother, and you know, I was like, you know, this is what's happening, blah, blah, blah. And as I'm on the phone, the specialist called me from the hospital, and he says, can you come back? I need to talk to you. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I know. So I went back, and you know, and his perspective, which I really did appreciate a little bit more, was the idea that, you know, he said, putting him on IV was not going to cure him it wasn't going to help him he was going to be in the same state as he was in at that time which he was asleep the whole time um and so you know he was very like you know he didn't dance around the issue right so he was like you need to understand you need to be okay with your intentions of doing this like you don't want to do it for selfish reasons okay right yeah um because what we're doing is we're prolonging whatever he's going through right now until the next day um and there was still no guarantee that with the IV he was going to stay he was going to survive the night right so he was like if you want to prolong it but know that we're just prolonging it and at that point we decided again we were like all over the place we decided then that if that was the case to just send him back in the middle of the night to the to the nursing home because it is about well, quality was, of yeah, life that was, right that was the right decision you know, like he would just be, and I know that a lot of people question, like, I had to explain myself to, like, um, you know, his other family members because, you know, they, they're, it's a different mindset, right? Like, it's that you do everything you can to kind of, and I think that was a difficult conversation to have because it was as if, um, like, I didn't want to say I was giving up. It wasn't that I was giving up. I think it was I was accepting what was going to eventually happen and and I wanted him to have some type of dignity these were like tough decisions it's a tough decision at two o'clock in the morning and you're sitting in the emergency room for like five hours and you're dealing with your own grief right yeah so it's not the best of decisions and I think that's something that we have like I think that's something that you know when it actually happens it's 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 a difficult one to kind of think about. I had to go, I had to do, um, I kind of did my grieving, I did pre-grieving, if you could understand Mm -hmm. that. So when all of these decisions had to be made for my mom, when she first went into palliative care, um, I did counseling because I had to wrap my head around the fact that I'm giving up. Like I'm basically saying, yeah, I'm not doing any bells and whistles 
I'm not, you know, this this is it. This is yeah. when, like, she's going to decide how, but I'm not trying to sustain right. this life, right. how she's living right now, because it's, I don't think she would want to. No. But I'm, like, I'm guessing, right? Like, she did do a living will, which has no merit after, like, that bill. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter because there's so many parameters around the legalities of it. Like okay. for sure, um, because I and my brother have deciding authority, um, because a person could that could stand to gain. So like if mm-hmm. I'm in you know, financially it um, they can't make the decision. Oh, right. So I was, like, you yeah. know, being facetious, going, okay, so should I let the gardener make that decision? Like, who who are you? Excuse me. <laughs> you, do you put a classified ad? Excuse me. I Can you make a decision? Like, when yeah. if it comes to, like, who? Then who? I don't know. If it's not your loved ones, like your, your family, like, who? Right. Because you would have their, her best interest. I, yeah. It's, it's. It's really, we care more about our animals than we do. But you know what? I personally believe that it that bill had to fall or pass because there were some family members who took advantage of that. And those are, like, it's that idea of, like, the rotten apple. Right, but then right? I'm thinking. Which is unfair. Okay, but I'm thinking there should be, like, come on, common sense. If the yeah. person has been around for like 10 years and there's zero quality of life like you, you know there's an incurable disease come on oh, what does that person stand to gain after a decade right. oh i agree with you i agree well anyways we right. digress that's fine because <laughs> this is nothing to, anyways <laughs> no but it is i mean it's definitely a difficult decision yeah so um but I, my conscience is clear. That's right. Right? Because um, you did everything. Yeah. There was nothing else that could have could have been done. And he um, really did go when he was ready. I think so. Yeah. And, like, it was f- not funny. Can you use that? Yeah, if you in can. This, in this context? Yeah. It was really funny when my dad passed away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we were there, like, all, like, in the morning. And then we had, uh, we went out for lunch, and so we went into the room, and he was, he hadn't woken up since I saw him on the Wednesday, and, um, we said, you know, Dad, we're going to be right back, we're just going for lunch, mm-hmm. you know, every, you know, we'll be back in an hour, and, uh, he passed while we were away. Yeah. So he, you know, I think. He went when he was ready. I think so. And he didn't want an audience. No. They say that, though. They say that. Um, my well, my grief counselor said that. Like, um, he worked in a hospice, mm-hmm. and he said, like, you know, a person can just step out, yeah, just go to the washroom, and yeah. then that's when it will happen. Well, my mom did the same thing. Really? Like, yeah, she was when she, she was in CCU. She passed away in two thousand eight, um, and it was, she was getting like really worked up. She was on the um, not the CPAP, it's the other PAP, some. Pop, whatever pop it was full on mask the oxygen like this like Darth Vader that's what I called her okay. and she loved it anyway <laughs> <laughs> so she was starting to like kind of have difficulty breathing so I said okay well let's you know take some time take a nap I'll be back I'm gonna go drive and see dad who lived like 10 minutes away in the nursing home and I'll come back when you come back from when you wake up and by the time it took me to leave the hospital and get to the nursing home the hospital called and said that she had passed. That's right? I've, I've heard a lot of those stories. Yeah. So. So, yeah. So I mean, I think though that the grieving It'll process. Come in waves. Yeah, it's different though. Like it's different from when my mom passed away, because I feel like. Yeah, kind of like you said with your mom, right? Like it. She's a different person. Yeah. Like, he, he was a different person, and I still and I loved him. Yeah, but me too, and I can't communicate with her. Yeah, I couldn't communicate with him. So that makes with, it difficult. With him. Um, like, I know, like, it was, it, was, uh, it was expected, but unexpected at the same time. So I was actually talking to a friend of mine today, and I said, you know, when it came to the, the stages of grief, I 
I think I like I okay. only have Kubler oh. Ross. Oh, sorry, Sage's degree. Psychiatrist. Sorry. Who examined the, so, the social worker <laughs> yes. in me just came out. She's like, okay, you know, the stages, stages of grief. Okay, yeah. so no. So. Kubler Ross <laughs> was a psychiatrist who noticed there were patterns of people who were dealing with death and dying or someone who just was diagnosed with an illness. And the first one is denial, anger, bargaining is third, bargaining depression and acceptance when Kubler Ross came up, up with these I wanted though, to kill Kubler Ross well when she came up with it we, apparently the idea was that we were going to go through the grief the stages sequentially yeah and it's but not it's not like it's that not you can have all five in one day <laughs> I that's can like, wake up like completely like, fine that's what I said about Alzheimer's yeah Dealing with Alzheimer's you can go through all of that in one day in one day and then you wonder why you're so exhausted right and it's because you wake up and everything is fine, and then a song comes on the radio, and all of a sudden like, you're yeah, like <laughs> bawling, looking at the guy beside you. Then you get angry because the guy beside you in the car is looking at you like, "What is wrong you with you?" And you me? just want to, yeah, <laughs> say sorry. And then you're like all over the place, and then you wonder what's wrong with me. Yes, <laughs> but um, but with this with this one, I feel like I didn't do denial, I didn't do anger, and I didn't do bargaining. I flip flop between sadness and acceptance, and that's it. Because I feel like there's no denial because it was expected. And there's nothing more you could have done. No. So there's, there's no bargaining. There's no bargaining. Oh, I'm stuck. There's no anger because I feel like the way that he passed was was with dignity, right? Mm -hmm. So Which is the main thing. So I feel like with those, yeah. So Kubler Ross, with a capital W, only two <laughs> going through. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. I don't know if anyone has questions, but I feel like Pretty I've been sure talking. nobody's going to have questions. Sorry. I know everyone's watching and, and like, I'm like, oh. Yeah, okay. So, blah, 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 how blah, about blah, 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 those J's? Keep, <laughs> keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. It's a sad okay. thing. It was, a, it's sad. Yeah. But. It ha it's, it's, it's inevitable. It's part of this. It's inevitable yeah. for anybody, and I think that's probably the main message mm -hmm. that um, if your loved one is, I don't, I just think personally anybody it's healthy or not because mm -hmm. you know if you don't have these hard discussions about what what your wishes are, what you yeah. want, and I know people don't like to talk about death, but, but you have to. You can't get happen. out of this world alive. Mm -mm. It hasn't been done yet, so. I think it's something you should talk about. Like I tell my, I tell Jalen, you know, charbecue. I want to be cremated. <laughs> hook it up. Don't delay. Like a Spitfire. Like I don't care. I don't understand. I'm not. Just load up the oven. We're good. It's it's fine. You don't need to do all the dramatics. <laughs> Save your money. Save your money. Did you, no, but cremating costs a lot of money. No, it's like you know, four grand. That's still a lot of money. Cause <laughs> better you, than did you know twenty grand that you actually have to buy a coffin? Yeah, in yeah. order to but be cremated. You, yeah, but it's like not a. But even if it's a pine box, you still have to pay for it. That's how they get you. It's a business. Just like how you have to get a a, co um, a coffin for the coffin. And then you have to get. Mm -hmm. the, oh yeah, you have to get an urn. Oh, you're not cream. You're getting cremated. So yes. yes, I thought you can sprinkle, <laughs> sprinkle. You could just. I don't care. I'm not. I'm. <laughs> on your driveway. Sprinkle. You could do whatever. <laughs> not on the driveway. That's rude. No. <laughs> okay, in the garden. No, I don't want to be in the garden. No. Is this getting morbid? No, because it's part of like. Well, oh, okay, so we no, it's not part of it? life. It's part of life that you want to be cremated, but, but like, you're not where we're going to oh, spread you know your how ashes it's illegal. might you actually be... You can't just be spreading my ashes all anywhere. How are they going to know? I could say it was in my barbecue. you're doing barbecue. this live. You're doing this live. <laughs> you're admitting. <laughs> it's the first step. I am making suggestions. You're doing the kubler Ross. I'm making healthy acceptance. suggestions. <laughs> you're at acceptance. You're admitting. Jalen, don't listen to what I'm suggesting. You're not allowed to just spread human remains anywhere you feel like it. How are they going to know? Well, because I told you, you just admit it. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> She's not, this is not dumbest criminals. 
Well, how would they know? Well, we saw your confession. Man. Edits. Anywho. This is why I don't like lies. Okay, anywho. Because we can edit. We can he- edit it out. Jalen's not going to be spreading my ashes all over town. Okay. Not allowed. Is he supposed to get your ashes everywhere? Those urns are expensive. You don't have Just to. No, he me. could. I don't know. Don't they have new things now? Like They have the, the like vials. Well, that's ridiculous. They have a vial. I don't want to, don't want to be carried and around. And you carry. No, no Jalen's going to carry a vial no. of Karen. No, thanks. Around her. No, neck. he's not. Not. And they're gonna be like, oh my god, that's so pretty. What is it? And he'll be like, that's my mom. No. 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 <laughs> not happening. He could just bury my ashes. But then you have to pay for burial. So what? Your whole point of being cremated was because it co- it's cost too much to have. Yeah, a, but it's like a, a little small. thing. Like it's a little thing. So you want him to, you want him to dig a hole? Really? I'm just saying, because if you have to get someone to dig a hole, you know how much it costs to dig a hole? How much? Two grand. Two grand to dig a hole and fill it back up. <laughs> Two grand. So, you want him to cremate you, which is 4000 dig a hole, which is like 2000 Well, what are we at? Like six grand. And you haven't even bought the coffin. He's going to be. going to be. He's and gonna, the vial. He's going to be a surgeon. He can afford it. Then if he can afford it, he should just have a regular... No, I don't want all of that. I don't want to have a viewing and all of that. Do you think that they should have, or does it exist? You know how, like, when you're pregnant, you have birth plans? Should you not have a death plan? Yeah, they do have them. Like, in pure detail, this is what I want? Yes, you can buy that. Okay. Actually, I bought one for my dad, but he didn't plan it. I did. Right, so you can't... No, you you should. You should... I think everybody should. I, yes. Everybody should have a funeral plan. Yes. So that. So a couple years ago, this is what. So a couple years ago, we I went to the funeral home. I planned out his entire funeral from the prayer cards to the casket to everything. So really, all they needed was him to kind of fill the whole thing. See there. And. And then it's cal- less stress. Yes, but we calculated the cost. This was awesome. They, I don't know why it's awesome, but we calculated how much it would cost. And I started paying in to his funeral two years ago every month. So when he passed away, we already had a deposit down. Prepared. It's all about That's what you do. But it's it, it's not something that people are comfortable with. I don't know. I I'm I, I've always been comfortable. Well, because like when my dad passed away, like he he had a massive heart attack. We didn't know. We just guessed. Right. Like we didn't know what to do. Right. We, he didn't tell us his wishes. He didn't have anything planned. Right. And then it leaves it to his, the kids going, uh, and it's am not, I doing you're, the right emotionally thing? Emotionally, you're just Yeah, not like I'm drained. Ready. I'm just, it was already shocking because it was unexpected. Obviously, a massive heart attack is unexpected. Yeah. And he was 58, so that's unexpected. Yeah, he's young. So, you know, like you're there plan- going, uh, 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 and my mom has Alzheimer's, so I can't ask her. Right. And she kept saying cremated, so we just went with that. Okay. Which was odd because my dad was devout Catholic. Anyways. We're Why are you not a... supposed to be? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I don't know. Back in the day, like. I don't know. They were against cremation. Catholic Catholicism was against cremation, but now it's okay. Okay. Now it's has a thumbs up now. I wonder why. I don't know. Okay. That's a different conversation. Well, I'm sorry if this was a pretty somber, <laughs> morbid conversation today. Usually, but it's, 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 usually that your podcasts are like so like upbeat and like cause, funny cause and like hearted, eating. and yeah. here I am talking about death. <laughs> well, and okay, this death is a part of life. Mourning and the grieving and and we talk about things you're gonna have to deal with. And this is something you're going to have to deal with. And it doesn't even matter. It's not dementia related. Right. So. So one of the things I forgot to mention. So he he passed away due to kidney failure. Right? His kidneys failed because of dehydration. Um, however, according to his death certificate, his official cause of death was complications due to end stages of dementia. Because even though his kidney, kidneys failed, it was because he was dehydrated which was because he refused to eat, which was because of the dementia. So it all kind of trickled back to that. 
so um, at least you're getting proper stats because yeah. that's a number um, one issue of why the stats are kind of like skewed because um, typically what happens on a death certificate is they will put the, the reason for death as whatever happened. So like in my mom's case, perhaps, let's just say she develops pneumonia and passes away from pneumonia, they're gonna put it on her death certificate, pneumonia, but right. it's, t it's really Alzheimer related, right? right? So. And I wonder if that's because he was in a nursing home. Probably, because yeah, Cause they're probably more aware yeah. of stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Long, morbid convo. Thanks, Cindy. But wait, before we finish, you have the exciting oh, news about your book. I and, do. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm putting it's you in the, the spot. Process I'm of, putting you in the spot. Okay. It's on the process of getting published, so it's being edited right now. Um, however, because it's 436 pages, it's... That's a lot of pages. It's a lot of pages. But I did incorporate my first book in this book. Oh, okay. So you're getting kind of like two books for the price two. of two. Two. <laughs> two. <laughs> it's a great deal. Two. Two for one. Anyways, I don't know. Um, it It's looking like, well, because I'm, I initially said this publisher is an academic publisher, so it uh, they do books for universities and mm -hmm. colleges. Like textbooks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, textbooks. So it's I'm looking I'm trying to see what the price I can but it's looking at about eighty dollars. So I'm not sure. There is no cost for knowledge. Just saying. Thanks, Cindy. I should patent that one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's oh. it's taken. Is it done by that knowledge owl? is power? The owl with the hat with the graduation hat, did he say that? I There's no cost. but anyways. No anyways. cost for knowledge. I will see what the publisher says, and I will keep you posted. Mm -hmm. And and next week's podcast, I'm gonna, we're have Facebook has a lot of politics on doing podcasts on your page, so uh, I might switch it over to the my author page, mm -hmm. like the live podcast. So I'll let you know prior to next week where it will be, where you need to log on, or I mean view. Hopefully next week will be a lot more lively. <laughs> well, oh, is that a pun? Oh my gosh, didn't even, was that too soon? I think that was too, too soon. soon. Hashtag, too soon. That was a little. That was not appropriate. No. That was clinically, that was my clinical word. It was like completely inappropriate. Okay. Unbelievable. But it was actually good. It was like, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. see, I see, totally see. didn't even catch that. So clever. It's a Freudian slip. Yes. So yes, hopefully next week will be a lot more lively and have the party bumping. Yeah. Right? So. But thanks for, hi Monique, hi Sandy, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> and yeah, Monique, you should come on one time, a different perspective of a caregiver, um, but it will be great to hear what you're going through and I know Monique's uh, challenges firsthand, but I mean, she if she's feeling comfortable, she can talk about it. And Sharon is supposed to come and talk about her mother-in-law who was diagnosed with dementia, or not even maybe misdiagnosed. Um, but she she was gonna come on as well. Okay. Okay. So till next week. Bye. You have to press finish. Finish. Finito.